everybody and welcome to 10 tips for the best Christmas sessions ever. I'm April Massett and today I'm going to be talking about 10 tips that are really going to make your Christmas session stand out from the competition. It's 10 tips that I've used for the last almost 20 years in photography and I think that you might find at least a couple of things helpful no matter how long you've been a photographer. So let's get started. Okay, tip number one, shoot those promos. Shoot the promos, guys. So if you've already established your brand value and you already have a trusted customer base, the promos are really just to show those people what the backdrop's gonna look like, what the props are gonna look like. It gives them an idea of the outfits that they need to collect. If you already have that, it's okay to just throw up a photo of the backdrop and say, you know, with maybe ideas linked to a Pinterest board that says, hey, here's what I have in mind for Christmas sessions this year. They've already done this with you before, so they know the drill. And so they're gonna be able to look at that and maybe ask you a few questions about what to wear, but for the most part, they're gonna know what to do. If you haven't built up that following, you really need to shoot that promo because not everybody can look at a photo of a backdrop and visualize what you have in your head, okay? Some people, they have to be shown. They just have to be. They, they, they can't even get outfits together. They need help. They need you to hold their hand the entire way and that's okay. But either way, there are benefits to shooting those promo shots for you and the client. So let's talk about some reasons why you need to shoot those promos. Number one, if you shoot your promos far enough ahead of time, clients truly appreciate that uh, time that they have to be able to mentally prepare. You know how some clients, like they can't just like, okay, hey, can you show up tomorrow? It just like can't happen in their brain. So they need like a good like month or so, six months, whatever, to be able to mentally prepare for going to take pictures, right? Or maybe they're trying to convince their husband to do it or their kids, heck, I don't know. But some people need time to prepare. And always, if you are not styling, the clients definitely need time to gather outfits, especially if they have a larger family. If they're just shooting one kid, not a big deal. They can probably use, you know, whatever you have in your style closet, but they really need time to mentally and physically prepare for that shoot. Reason number two, it takes the pressure off of you. Okay. If you go ahead and shoot it early, when it comes to the time, and, and you know, as the season gets closer and closer, we just get busier and busier and busier. It's like things start adding up, school functions start piling onto the calendar. It gets crazy. If you go ahead and plan this early in the season, it's not gonna be as stressful for you. I think we're on four. <laughs> anyway, tip four, um, when you start to shoot, let's say you shoot your promos and then you kind of release you know, make a big deal about it, make it the big Christmas release or, you know, debut or whatever. And, you know, count the days down, maybe give a giveaway or something like that and make it a big deal. Okay. So one thing that you can do if it's ahead of time is you can pre-book or take reservations for spots. So people can put an amount down and reserve their spot. And then, you know, you have that money coming in that you can use to purchase backdrop, additional props, whatever you need to purchase, and then they can go ahead and pay the rest. That's one option. That's one way to do it. Everybody does it differently, but that's one way to do it. Another thing, probably tip five at this point, um, another thing that I have always done is referral credits. So I've always done a referral system since day one. I mean, like we're talking like 2001, okay? I've always done referral credits. So this would be a good time if you were going to do that to introduce that or, you know, release it, or you could do, you know, exclusively for Christmas sessions and uh, you could do a referral where they get something and then whomever books um, from them gets something also. There's about a million ways that you can do that, but that, that's a, it's always worked well for me. I still photograph referral clients that I've had for years and years and years. Like, I mean, I literally 20 years, I have photographed them and they started out as referrals. So it is an awesome thing to do if you don't already do that. Another thing too, if you do IPS or if you do add-on um, items such as cards, canvas, books, 
gifts, ornaments, stuff like that, it is a great time for you to start showing those things. So if you've kept cards from the past, if you sell cards, uh, go ahead and maybe show those on a little Instagram reel, do a video, put it on your Facebook page. You can also show canvases. Um, make sure that those items are ordered and ready and out. You can use your promo sessions to order those samples and then offer them if you want at the uh, clients, models, whatever, um, at a discount. And that gives people that come in for your sessions an idea of what they can order. If you're all inclusive, um, it's, a, it's a cool thing if you can and have the time to offer things like cards and ornaments. They're just fun little gift things. They don't take long to order. They're super easy. And you have the potential to make you know some extra money off of that too. Tip number two, styling. Okay, we all know that the biggest source of stress for moms, dads, grandma, whatever, whoever is styling the sessions, whether it be you two, is styling, like figuring out what the heck to wear, right? So that, in my experience, is the biggest stressor for moms, dads, grandparents. So what can we do to kind of relieve that pressure off of them, right? Let's talk about that because we all know how important it is to style and make sure that they all look good, makes our photography look better, they're happy with it, they spend more if you do IPS, like it just all kind of goes together, right? So one thing that I've done in the past, actually lots of times, almost every time we do a shootout, is I create a style file. So what that is, is basically the background with a bunch of options for dress that match the backdrop and they're really just inspiration. Now, generally they're from a website like say, you know, Target, Gap, Old Navy, somewhere like that, where it's easily accessible, but also it just is inspiration. So if they have a higher budget, they can shop elsewhere. If they have a lower budget, they can also shop elsewhere. It's just sort of a color, um, inspiration, style guide for them to kind of give them idea and get their gears turning. If you're like, meh, I don't really want to do the style file. It takes up too much effort. That's too much time. I don't want to do it. Fine, whatever. Use good old Pinterest, okay? Make yourself a little Pinterest board, throw your backdrop uh, image in there and give them access to it and all the ideas that you want, okay? That is another route that you can take. Also, I'm going to add that while you're shooting these promos um, for your Christmas sessions, while you're shooting the actual Christmas sessions, when you get your backdrops in, when you start getting those dresses in, the props, when you're shopping for the props, all of this needs to be documented and it needs to be posted to your social media because everybody loves to see that, okay? Everyone loves to see that. They wanna see the process because it makes them feel invested in the process. Okay, so make sure that you are posting that. You don't have to do anything fancy, like reels or anything like that. I mean, just like, hey, oh my gosh, look at these cool props, I can't wait to use these props. Unbox the dress. Oh my gosh, look at this amazing dress. Unbox the backdrop, hang it up. Look at this backdrop, you guys. Selfie, selfie, click, click. It's so easy, like seriously. And everybody loves it. They feel invested in your story and it makes them wanna uh, join it and who who knows you you could get a ton of new clients from that maybe none I don't know but it hardly takes any effort and it's worth it behind the scenes is always 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 worth it I promise tip number three let's talk about bribes okay because bribes literally make my world go round okay I could not do my job with children if just children between a certain age. I mean, babies, I can't really bribe. If I could, I would. Newborns definitely can't bribe. Could if I would, I don't shoot newborns anymore. But I promise you, I would give them a sucker if I thought I would get something out of it. So there's that. Bribes can be anything you want. Literally, bribes can be anything. So for my dream dress sessions, my standard bribe is a beanie boo. And I have always done it that way. The girls literally <laughs> collect them. They're a hot commodity, like it's a big deal. They wanna get their beanie baby. Some of them don't even know they're getting a beanie baby and then they find out and they're like dying, okay? It's awesome. My other bribe is candy. And then I also have toys from Oriental Trading. So my husband is a dentist and I'm the one that has always ordered the Oriental Trading toys um, to bribe the kids that come in and get dental work done. And it's worked like a charm for years. I used to have a studio in the back of his dental office and I would just like let them choose out of the big tooth and it was fun, they loved it, right? So there's tons of different things that you can do for bribes.
What do you think? That's a hard one. You're <laughs> <laughs> going with that one? That one! All right! Oh, I have people that say, oh my gosh, those Beanie Babies are so expensive. Okay, I add the cost to the session. So technically, they're buying the Beanie Baby and I'm just giving it to them. And that sounds really bad, but it's okay. Um, if you choose to do that, just go ahead and add, it's like five, six bucks. Um, the cheapest I found them is at Party City. And five, six bucks, add it to the end of the session. Instead of 385, it's 390, okay? not rocket science the oriental trading toys so so cheap okay candy so cheap like kids do not care if it's halloween candy they don't care the only thing that i will say they care about is candy canes are the best bribe ever at christmas ever i don't know why candy canes are a big deal however they will call you out if that candy cane is broken. They do not want it. They do not want that defective candy cane. There will be, they will be like, no, thank you. Here you go. So I will say, make sure that your candy canes aren't broken. Me, I'm the kid that throws the candy cane on the floor and eats the pieces, but I haven't, I've found like maybe one kid like that and that's it. So make sure your candy canes aren't broken. So now that we've talked about some different bribes, we have bribe rules. Yes, there are bribe rules. There are very, very serious bribe rules, okay? Bribe rule number one, do not reveal your bribe. Do not reveal your bribe until necessary. So when a kid walks in the door, I'm not like, oh, hey, hey, guess what? I'm giving you candy, kid. No, they do not know I have a bribe, okay? It's sort of like when you take your kid to the restaurant and you have like toys to distract them in your purse, but you don't take out the toys until you have to use the toys. Like if they're being good over there, you just let them be, right? So if the kid comes in, they're doing an amazing job, they're posing, whatever, they don't need to know about the bribe until the end, right? You don't need to pull it out until they're like over this and you've got to pull the bribe out, okay? So don't give your bribe up until absolutely necessary. That's number one. Number two, you always tell them when you have to tell them about the bribe. Okay, today we are working for candy or we are working for Beanie Boos. We are working for whatever. You have to give them a goal. So not just like, hey, look at this cool sucker. No, it's, hey, we're working for candy today, okay? So here's what I expect from you and then you will get the candy. If you just lay it out in black and white, they will literally do whatever you wanna do. It is a rare, rare case that I have a kid come in that won't do exactly what I want them to do. Honestly, it's only happened like once or twice, they'll never come back. That's a whole nother educational video, whatever. But they will do whatever you want um, for that candy, for whatever, I promise. You just have to set the ground rules and let them know what you expect from them and they'll pull through, I promise. Rule three, when necessary, you show the bribe. Like I said, you say, this is what we're working for. You show it to them. You don't just say like, we're working for candy. You have to show them the candy, okay? They visually see it. You got some shots off of that and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, I want that candy. I want that sucker so bad, okay? So that's the next rule. Okay, rule four. Then the next step after you show it to them, you tell them they're working for it. Then if they're still, if you still kind of need to hold their attention, let them hold it, let them touch it, okay? If it's a beanie boo, you want them to hold it. They can hide it behind them. They can put it um, underneath them. They can hide it in the skirt of their dress. Like they can do a lot of things with it, okay? Let them touch it if you have to, okay? Then you take it back, okay? You let them, unless you let them hide it and they're cool and they're, you know, doing what you want them to do, then you hide it and then you work with that, get your shots, whatever. Okay, the last one is, even if you've shown them the sucker, even if you've let them touch that beanie boo, okay, you let them choose. You always let them choose. You don't say you have to have this one or you have to have that one. The kids want choice, okay? So their reward for doing exactly what you want them to do, and yes, there have been times I have not given the reward, <laughs> you let them choose. Let them choose whatever color sucker they want. If you know that they have siblings at home, you send them home with candy for those siblings or dad or whoever didn't get to come to the session and they will love you forever and ever, amen, and they will do good every time they come in. Tip number four, we're gonna talk about lighting harmony. And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to my computer monitor so I can really show you what I'm talking about. 
when we shoot a backdrop, now I do realize that this isn't a Christmas drop, but I feel like it does a decent job at showing um, the shadow in the door frame. So when you look at a drop, you want to immediately look at the direction of the light within the backdrop. So you can tell from this backdrop based on the shadow in the door frame on the left that the direction of light, your brain is going to think that it should come from the left. So my lighting comes from the left and you can see that from looking at Cameron's face and seeing the shadow on her left side of her nose. So it'd be camera right, but you can see that the shadow on her face mimics the shadow in the door frame. Therefore, your brain thinks that it's correct. So even though it's a cartoon background, your brain is okay with that because the shadows mimic the shadows in the backdrop. So you want to always make sure that you are mimicking whatever lighting conditions are in your backdrop and the direction of the light. Another um, lighting situation we need to pay attention to in our backdrops is the ambient light coming from the backdrop. So not only do we need to pay attention to the direction of light going into the backdrop, we need to also pay attention to the light coming out of the backdrop. So if I had just photographed Scout up here, you know, supposedly pretending to choose a nutcracker out of the toy window, um, I mean, it would be a cute shot. I mean, totally, like straight out of camera, it's adorable. But to make it more believable, I added haze and light from the lamp post and the storefront window because in reality, there would be light coming from the storefront and that lamp post. So I just simply mimicked that. Tip number five. Tip number five is to make sure you add that transition at the bottom of your backdrop. Okay, if you don't add a transition, that's cool. S make sure though, that if you don't add a transition to the bottom of your backdrop, that you're not gonna create more work for you later in Photoshop, okay? Time is money and we don't wanna be sitting behind the computer. That's not where most of us make money, okay? So you want to do a few easy, quick things to make that transition from your backdrop to your floor drop look as realistic as you possibly can. Okay guys, so when I'm talking about a transition, so what I'm meaning is the area where your backdrop meets your floor. This is a matte floor, so if I was using my studio floor, it would even be more obvious because it's a darker wood. But when I talk about transition and how important it is to just take the time to make that transition look even better just by using some simple props. This is what I'm talking about. How do we do that? There's tons of ways you can do that. You can do it with snow. Okay, so this drop is joy to the world. It is not hung perfectly, but you can see how beautiful it is. And you can see this is a good example of a backdrop that needs a transition at the bottom. So although the bottom is white snow and my floor is pretty close to snow. You can see that it does need some sort of snow or fluff at the bottom. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, here's what I get. So, you know, everybody has their different opinions on snow, fake snow. I don't like to worry about mine. I don't want to take care of it. At the end of it, I want to throw it away because it is a mere $14.99 at Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon. It's even cheaper than that. So you can get a whole box for that much. So here we go. So you're just going to take the snow. Sometimes the kids get a kick out of helping me do this. Sometimes I will even put it and make a trail, which is cool too. Then you want to kind of fluff it up. Where you can see the top of what's in the backdrop so that you can see that the snow leads from the backdrop into the ground. So you can see that might, looks much better there. And in photos, it looks even better. You could even do some sort of a floor that would be cobblestone or something like that. And 
make a trail. You could also do a floor that is like cobblestone or whatever and make a trail with the snow. You can get fancy with it, but just the amount of snow that I added right there, I mean, that right there even helps. You could even come out and put a couple of trees. I'll go grab one and show you. So even though this isn't exactly the same type of tree as that is, you can see that it even adds depth to the shot just by adding this tree. And I'm gonna tell you, so this tree is from Walmart. It is a lit tree, which these have lights too. So if you wanna get technical about it, you could put lights on those also or add them later in Photoshop. I will say the best tree deal in my opinion is Walmart before Christmas time you can get trees that aren't lit like do not have lights on them for so cheap I'm talking like 20 30 dollars like different heights of course are gonna cost you different amounts but I mean you can't you can't beat that amount so just even adding some trees um, on the edges helps a ton and that is perfect example of how to add a snow transition. You can get as fancy with the snow or not, up to you. You can do it with greenery. So this is like the kind of garland that I was talking about that I get super cheap after Christmas. As soon, like the day after Christmas, I try to get into Hobby Lobby and they usually have this marked off. The more days goes by, the cheaper it gets. I mean, you can get it. I've, I purchased Christmas trees for 80% off and I mean, it's it's totally worth it to store it, and it's great. The cheaper um, is the non-lit, so if it doesn't have lights on it, it's going to be cheaper, but it's just great to have um, to use for transitions. You can tuck your floor, uh, your backdrop underneath your floor drop or your mat or your floor backdrop. So not every backdrop needs a transition. Um, this backdrop clearly I know it's not Christmas but this backdrop clearly doesn't need a transition the trans or the backdrop transitions well to the floor so what I've done here is this is a mat as you can see and I have hung the backdrop to be a little bit longer so that I can just lay this over it and then smooth it out. That's a cord I can't do anything about. So, and then I'll just take it and just smooth it out. And I actually have another backdrop hanging behind this because when you do that, it sticks to the other and it's just much easier to hang. So this would just be an example of a drop and a floor, it still has wrinkles in it, sorry, that doesn't require a transition really. You can also use props. So just look at the backdrop, look at the props that are in the backdrop. They've put a lot of time and effort into matching that and making them look beautiful. And you can usually find the same props, similar props at Target, a Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Home Goods, maybe around your house. I use a lot of my own decor as uh, props in, in my scenes quite a bit. So just make sure that you are, you know, making that transition to your floor look as real as possible. You don't need people in the shop for that. You don't technically need models. Of course, that's what your dress rehearsal slash promos are for. But, you know, just it's just going to save you time in Photoshop. It's really going to put you above your competition and it's really going to make it look amazing and real and magical. Okay, so it turns out I gave you guys way too much good information. So um, this is the conclusion of part one and look for... Uh, part two, 10 tips for the best Christmas sessions ever, and we'll see you there. Thanks.